Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Halley. I'm a senior market strategist here at Oanda Asia Pacific in Singapore, and this is the uh, weekly commentary on precious metals and commodities. The main event this week so far was last night's FOMC meeting where the Federal Reserve was surprisingly upbeat on the economy. Uh, it still said that uh, they were uh, looking at one more interest rate hike, most likely in December. And they didn't adjust uh, their dot plots at all for 2018. Instead, they were still on target there uh, for another three hikes. The market itself had been pricing in a less than 40% chance of a December hike and had certainly scaled back their expectations for next year as well. The Fed did announce uh, the expected uh, um, winding down of their balance sheet, as, as some people are calling it, a quantitative tightening. Uh, and this, of course, has been launched uh, overnight as well. I think, though, the takeout we have to have there is that uh, the Federal Reserve is much more upbeat on the economy and the data than the uh, the market generally tends to be. And we did see, of course, a US dollar rally on the back of that, and we saw US dollar uh, yields uh, move slightly higher right across the curve. Overall, I thought the move was just so-so, frankly, given uh, the scale of the US dollar selling that we've seen over the last uh, few months. Um, it was a bit of a dead cat bounce, frankly, uh, against um, particularly Euro and, and Sterling. Uh, and over on gold, uh, it had a, a more of a, 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 a larger effect. Gold fell $20. Uh, we tested this, uh, if, I, if you follow the cursor here, this uh, key uh, 1296 long-term support 1300 region. And uh, as we speak now, Asia and early Europe, are actually testing the bottom boundaries of that. And it'll be very interesting to see if we get a daily close below this level. As we can see, we have a high to the left here in uh, late August, uh, a little spike through, but a close under. We had a test here. If we keep going to the left, we had a test in early June, double top. We had another test here in uh, mid-April. So this has been a key pivot level. And when gold actually moved through this level on the way up, it carved through 1300 and made its way high very quickly like a hot knife through butter. I've drawn this Fibonacci retracement here um, on, the, um, uh, on the chart from the lows in July to the highs in uh, um, early September. This level here, this 1296, coincides very closely with the 38.2% retracement at uh, 1299. You can see me circling on the left. And also this 1281 level, which is the 50% retracement. If we look at gold in a longer term picture, it still does look um, slightly bearish. I mean, excuse me, bullish, although we have broken this uh, longer term uh, trend line support here, which I'll come back to in a minute. So from a technical perspective, if gold is going to base and then make its way higher again, it really needs to high, hold this 38.2, 50% retracement. So we're talking around the 1299, 1281 region. Otherwise, uh, we will be looking at a uh, retest of the 1268, uh, 100 day moving average. This sloping trend line here, which has uh, pretty much held all the retracements since uh, early July, broke uh, on uh, Monday. And we've had um, three successive closes underneath it. More importantly, uh, yesterday and the day before, its rallies both stopped at around that level. So this is coming in at around 13, 16 today, and that's our first uh, important uh, resistance on the upside. But we really do need to see whether this uh, 1280, 1299 region holds over the coming week, and that will probably give us uh, a very good clue as to where... Um, gold is heading uh, directionally over the next few months. Uh, picture is very similar if I can rush through that uh, uh, on some of the other precious metals. Uh, if we can see silver here, again I've drawn a Fibonacci and we've seen the same corrective pattern uh, coming uh, through. Uh, more interesting on silver, this very solid uptrend line that's held it since early July uh, also broke but the, the bounces since then have been very mild and they've come nowhere near retesting the sloping uh, green line. If we look at uh, where that comes in today, that's around 17.595 and that's your 
first major resistance, possibly uh, this uh, level here at around uh, 17.40. Interestingly, on the uh, Fibonacci retrace here, we can see the 38.2% is coming in at around present levels, which is around 16.965. The 50% comes in at around 16.58-ish. Uh, so again, we would expect to see if silver is in a constructive long-term technical uptrend that it should base in this region that I'm circling here. Unfortunately for silver also, it has actually um, broken the 200-day 200, the 200 moving average, this blue line, and it's actually had a close underneath it. Well, uh, it will do if we still stay around these levels uh, into the New York close. We can see we're just above the 100 day moving average, which is around 16.8775, and that's uh, going to be intraday support, followed by this previous spike here uh, on the 25th of August, which is around the 16.73 level. We can see again, like gold, it had a very overbought RSI uh, earlier in the month, and we've certainly corrected all of that overbought condition and some. Platinum itself, I think, is probably the worst performing uh, precious metal on the charts here. No, no good news here on this chart, to be honest. Um, the I guess there's a few things going on here. One, platinum itself has a, um, an, an, a, a, an industrial surplus, uh, i.e. there's more platinum above the ground um, over the coming uh, two or three years than there will be users of that platinum. Uh, that's because it's mainly used in catalytic converters and diesel cars, and we probably don't have to go into the reason why maybe Europe aren't making too many more diesels than they previously were at the moment. Anyway, along the ways there, we've seen that uh, from this uh, peak at around uh, 1,023, it's been a precipitous fall. We've carved straight through this up uh, this um, this long-term uptrend line, which was around uh, the 998 level, and proceeded to uh, collapse in an almost disorderly manner um, to present levels around 9.943. Liquidity will play its part in platinum. It's not as liquid um, from a trading perspective as either gold or silver, so the moves do tend to be magnified, but we can't really deny that we've broken through and held underneath uh, the 100-day, the 200-day moving average, and it appears we will break and hold underneath the 100-day moving average, this red line today as well. In the process, uh, we've paid no attention to the 38.2, or even the 50% uh, retracements. And I take, uh, I put great store on this one because it also coincides with that 200 day moving average. So it carved straight through 956 if it wasn't there. And uh, we're certainly testing this uh, 61.8 at the moment. Uh, hard to predict a bottom here. Um, from a technical perspective, uh, we are looking, starting to look a little bit excessively oversold, although we're not there yet. So uh, the charts certainly point um, to uh, the possibility of uh, more pain, possibly down to this uh, sort of 9.17 and perhaps even lower. Palladium, the metal that keeps giving, I said, but today I will be saying that it's the metal that's starting to give a little back. Uh, as you know, as we, uh, we squeeze this chart up, we can just see here the scale of the uptrend through most of the year, uh, this beautiful long-term support line. In the greater scheme of things, is still we're still nowhere near this line. So yes, Palladium has had a, uh, a setback, uh, but perhaps the price action here has held up better than all the other precious metals. Palladium itself will be in a structural deficit over the next few years, i.e. there will be less Palladium outside of the ground, above the ground, then there will be people who want to buy it. It's main industrial uses in catalytic converters, but in petrol cars, and therein lies, uh, therein, therein lies the big difference. We broke out of this consolidation period, uh, this multi-day high, um, and we've broken down through it on the way back from just over 1,000. The interesting thing is, if I just circle here between these two red lines, is that these, the attempt to rally has held uh, two days in a row at that 9.41, and I think that's your first important level, uh, uh, um, followed by uh, 9.17.635, which is this previous high to the left here in June, and then uh, mark the break, the last major breakout um, of, of, of this move into August. So 9.17.60, uh, 9.41, 9.41.30, your two major resistances. 
This 900 level um, will probably have some psychological value. We can see um, there's been a bit of congestion around this level on the way back up as well, and when it finally broke, it actually uh, made another jump higher and consolidated. Uh, so I would expect to see from a technical perspective uh, a few bids possibly sitting around the 900 level, followed by the 100 day moving average at 871, uh, then this long term uptrend line, and we can still see that is 835.9, 836. So we're still in a pretty solid uptrend, even with the scale of this pullback, and then the 200 day moving average itself. So we can see here there's actually quite a lot of long term support, a lot of um, support here, a lot of wood to chop here before we would, uh, from a technical picture, start turning structurally uh, bearish on, on palladium. Let's pop over to copper. I will add actually, um, there has been some extended long-term positioning uh, in uh, uh, from speculators uh, uh, in metals, precious metals, and um, and industrial metals, and and perhaps if you look at the commitment of traders report, you can see a lot of those longs have been reduced, and and, and this may be part of the unwind that we're seeing as well. We can see here initially, uh, I think I pointed out a couple of weeks ago, we were in a very overbought condition for copper, and so it was right for a bit of a technical correction. And the greater scale of things again, though, it's held up pretty well. I mean, we've got a double top up here now around one at three fifteen. Uh, we've broken back down through the breakout level here around 297 and that has successfully held uh, a series of uh, dead cat pounces since. We are testing this next support level around 2, uh, 290.50. Uh, the next target after that opens up another 6 cents lower around 284.70. And then we get to the longer term supports. Uh, which are around uh, this 100 and 200 day moving average, uh, each around the 270, 275. Overall, it does look like it's consolidating uh, before perhaps another correction lower, but given that the RSI has moved so far back to the other, uh, back down to the, uh, to, to the lower end of its range, um, I, it's hard to look at this technical picture and be overly bearish right now. This looks more, much, much more corrective than say uh, platinum or perhaps uh, silver and gold. Let's head into the energy side now, natural gas. Bit of a sleepy chart to be honest. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma couldn't really uh, shake it out of its lethargy. Uh, natural gas looks like it's um, continuing um, to uh, range trade. We've had a false break here out of this long-term resistance at 310.70. Uh, we did have one daily close up above it and then we basically closed on it the next day and drifted back down. Uh, we are now testing again the 200-day moving average at 306.40 uh, before we have the next support which is the 100-day moving average around 3.000. Uh, British thermal units, millions thereof. A uh, bit of a mouthful to say quickly. Uh, I think uh, the picture we can take away from this is that uh, uh, natural gas is most certainly still locked into this longer term 3.10, 3.11, 286 trading range, this multi, multi month trading range. Uh, and there's really nothing here right now um, that's going to um, give us uh, any hint that that uh, might be um, might be changing. So I guess uh, more range trading for natural gas. Brent gets quite exciting though. As we know, oh, well, I should actually clarify, we have an unofficial uh, OPEC NOPEC meeting starting today and going into tomorrow in Vienna. Um, there's a lot of speculation as to what the, they will come out with. Uh, it seems to be highly likely that they may extend the production cut uh, deal to um, finish much later in 2018, if not to all of 2018. There's uh, rumours that uh, they will try and bring Libya and Nigeria um, into that fold as well as part of the production cut deal, which would take more oil off the market. Uh, there's even talk that they may actually even increase the size of the production cut. I think the last one is extremely unlikely, uh, but uh, OPEC has surprised us before in the last 12 months, so I guess you can't uh, rule anything out. 
Brent's futures, the prompt futures have been in backwardation. That means the uh, the near futures are, are trading at a lower price than the spot level. Um, I won't bore you with the details as to why that's bullish, but it has structurally not been uh, a shape to the curve we've seen for many years, and it is a bullish structure. Um, this has all meant that Brent has performed exceedingly well over the course of uh, late August and September, um, but it mo its moment of reckoning is approaching, and by this I mean we are now approaching this long-term uh, high resistance zone around the 56 and a half, 57 level, this multi-month, multi-highs. Um, and this is where US shale uh, capped the rally by selling futures uh, last time over December and through to all the way to March, and then again in April, followed by uh, an almost 25% drop in the price of uh, Brent crude uh, by the time the dust had all settled. Um, since then, we've made a remarkable comeback, and uh, Brent has been consolidating, if we look over to the right of the chart, between 55 and 56, um, and looks primed to have an attack on this long-term resistance level. Um, conversely, if it, it tries it and fails it, um, then the potential opens for a move back down to this 53.5 level, and, and then um, this longer-term support here, which sits around 52.6. Um, we can see the support line goes all the way back to uh, early June. Uh, behind that, of course, is the 200 and the 100 day moving averages. But uh, certainly um, the chart itself has a very solid and constructive look about it. It's trading well above its long term support line um, and it's certainly trading to the highs of its ranges. What could upset the, the apple cart here? Uh, I, I would think if uh, there was a lot of disappointment in uh, this OPEC, non OPEC meeting uh, in Vienna today. Certainly, though, a break of 57 um, does suggest uh, um, a major turn of events in the, uh, in, the, in the international oil market. West Texas Intermediate's a slightly different story. The uh, Brent uh, WTI premium is still trading around about uh, six bucks, which is a uh, multi year highs. Brent itself is being weighed down by the glut of oil. Uh, that is sitting around in uh, the United States at the moment. And the reason for that partially is for the Hurricane uh, Harvey, which shut down most of the refining capacity in uh, Texas and parts of Louisiana. The oil still comes out of the ground, but it can't be refined because the refineries are all underwater. Um, thus, uh, the, uh, the price of uh, crude goes down because uh, it needs to compete for storage, but you get shortages in things like uh, downstream products like gasoline and jet fuel, etc., etc., And that's the price action we've seen. Um, that has been uh, slowly rectifying. I would expect the crude inventories will be distorted um, for the near future because of it. But um, And you can't just switch a, 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 an on switch on for a refinery. It takes a good... Uh, week or two for it to get cranking uh, back up to full capacity, even assuming it didn't have uh, water damage. But nevertheless, uh, WTI has been making its way to the top of its recent trading range. Around this 50.30, we've failed multiple times. We can see a couple of little spikes through, but it's important to realize that it hasn't actually closed above those, it's closed under them, but we certainly look like here again, we are poor, uh, poised uh, for another uh, test higher. Um, a test uh, through this level would open up this 51.65 before we start getting up to this sort of 53.60, uh, 54.60 region, which is the same sort of um, a yearly high we saw, uh, multi-month, multi-week, uh, multi-day uh, resistance region. We saw um, the same as Brent, where uh, shale, uh, US shale's uh, future selling eventually uh, defeated the... Uh, the um, bullish uh, speculators. Um, down through 49 would probably open up a correction, possibly as low as this 47, uh, 30 area, the 100 day moving average. We can see the 200 day moving average is successfully held all week, um, all the pullbacks. And so intraday, this uh, this 49.29.7, call it 49.30 level is an important intraday um, technical uh, support level, uh, pivot level, and so uh, a, a breakdown through that would uh, most likely uh, imply that we are heading uh, lower. Again, its fate will probably be decided uh, by whatever's going on with uh, OPEC and NOPEC in Vienna. Let's move over to the softs. We've got uh, sugar here. Uh, again, perhaps a bit like natural gas, it's certainly looking like it's uh, in a uh, equilibrium. Uh, 
part of the reason for this is that although uh, a lot of Brazilian producers are, um, are using that to make it into ethanol and thus taking sugar off the market and supporting prices, uh, a lot of Cuban sugar refining uh, capacity has been damaged by uh, Hurricane Irma and Jose. So a uh, large amount of um, Cuban uh, mall, uh, mills are, are, are damaged. And so, um, so whilst one is sort of holding prices down, the other one is capping prices. And thus, um, we've moved into a bit of an equilibrium. Certainly, that is implied um, by uh, the trading ranges, where we seem to be solidly locked between uh, 13.5 and 14.5 a pound, um, pivoting each side of this 100-day moving average. And uh, it's a little hard to get excited about sugar until we see these longer-term uh, resistance at uh, 15 and at 12 and a half uh, break. Head over to corn. So corn does look like it's getting set for a breakout. Now the key to this is, um, you can see this uh, beautiful triangle formation here. So basically when it breaks out, it should technically move by the base of the triangle. And if we can see where I'm moving my cursor right now, we can see that's around about the length of these between these two resistance lines. So we would be set up for about a 20 cent move, 25 cent move either side. Viewers can draw this chart themselves and get it exactly. But when we break out of this apex, um, it should, uh, if it's trading purely technically, move uh, by about that much uh, um, e e each side. It's a little hard to tell you uh, from this chart which way it may go. Um, what I will say is that, again, uh, it's being held in a, in a, in a range by um, excessive rains in Argentina which have uh, reduced their, it looks like it's going to reduce their wheat harvest noticeably. It's actually not harvesting season in the Northern Hemisphere, so places like Australia and Argentina have a, a bigger impact on prices. Um, but there's still a lot of unsold corn around from the uh, Northern harvest, and that seems to be capping prices. So Argentina on the bottom, United States on the top, um, and in between we just seem to be stuck in this range. Nevertheless, uh, the technical picture is implying that we are going to get some sort of meaningful breakout, possibly sooner rather than later. A quick look at soybeans. Again, soybeans is perhaps a little more constructive. Uh, there's no real news out uh, to be uh, overly... Um, constructive or bearish on soybeans at the moment. So I'm just looking at this uh, from a technical picture. It does seem to be quietly making its way forward apart from the spike. Um, and we do seem to be quietly testing towards the top of uh, this recent uh, trading range. We can see some multi-day highs here all around this 9.733 uh, 9 uh, region. We have the 200 day moving average just above uh, at uh, 9.77. 30, followed by another top here, uh, quite a nice one at 9.8060. So there is some wood to chop on the top side, but a daily close above this region here that I'm circling uh, would be uh, quite a bullish uh, indicator from a technical perspective and may imply that we are actually seeing a move in the beans finally. Uh, on the downside, of course, the most obvious support uh, immediately jumps to mind is this uh, 950, uh, 952 area, which is home to the 100-day moving average and, and this low. Uh, we can almost certainly draw a small support line here, if you're part of my uh, drawing, um, which takes us through to around um, the 94080 region. And so, uh, you know, we're... As I said, it does look like uh, we're boxed in, but perhaps with a slightly upward bias at the moment. Finally, let's move around to wheat, and this time I have to mention Argentina again. Those pesky rains down there are threatening uh, to um, reduce uh, the crop, but also drought in Australia is also wreaking havoc on the uh, crop yields down there. So we've got a, a double header, so to speak, rain in Argentina, no rain in Oz, and somehow both of them are conspiring to uh, drop the uh, potential wheat crops this year, and uh, that's been positive for prices, and this is probably why, when we look over here to the right, that we've seen reasonably positive action here in wheat as it's picked itself up off the floor. 
And more interestingly, it's basically held this very long-term uh, support line around 393.70. Let's squash that up. You see we goes all the way back down to um, this low in early 2017. And it does appear to be a bit of a, a multi sort of weak pivot level when it does move. So uh, I think uh, you have to respect the fact that it's had some near misses and held a number of times. So this is a key level of this 393.70. In the meantime, we do seem to be making our way to the top end of the range. And we can see here around this 427 region, uh, this, uh, which is basically uh, very close to the 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, we do seem to be trying to test that region. If we break out of there, I think uh, the technical picture suggests that we will move to this 4.4 uh, uh, region, which is uh, home to the 100-day uh, moving average. RSI is neutral, so I think uh, the technical picture is saying that uh, wheat's picking itself up off the floor, and the fundamental picture is perhaps saying to you um, that uh, uh, rain in Argentina and drought in Oz may uh, continue to support prices. Well, that's it from me today. Uh, I hope you found this uh, informative, and uh, I wish you all a wonderful um, finish of the week and weekend, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. Thank you very much.